Hey everyone, it's Margaret and welcome back to episode 12 of Van Tour Reactions and Reviews. In today's episode, we are examining a van that isn't a Sprinter, a Ducato, a Promaster or whatever, and we're going straight to a van that you cannot stand up in. Now, if you're watching this and thinking, oh, this doesn't apply to me, I disagree. I still think there's loads we can learn about design. And it's also cool to realize how a lot of the advice that I've given on high tops in the past is completely flipped on its head when it comes to low tops. Today I'll be reviewing Hannah Lee Duggan's van build. The majority of people who live in van life are living in low tops such as Hannah. Why? Because van life is notoriously affordable. It's cheap AF. And low tops are even more of a money saver. I would also say that low tops are an incredible starter van for people who are interested in testing out van life but don't want to shell out like $30,000 for an experiment. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to my van. I live here. I figure right now I'll just give you a little zoom around and show you all the little components to everything. So here's my is the kitchen area. So I've got my little cabinets up here with all my plastic bowls and plates and cups, coffee, um, water jug, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, this is kind of like the dry food storage. Did you notice a bunch of you realized that I hadn't done it in a couple episodes because I hadn't seen anything that I was like mm, about? but this one is that. Make sure to stick around to the end of the episode where I reveal what the did you notice was. I liked the way things looked when they were out on the counters, so um, it just looks a little bit more lived in. So I you know, kept the cutting boards out. These things are just held on with Velcro tabs. Um, so if I want to take them out, I can get that at them. First off, this van is very pretty, very clean. Lots of white, white sheets. People who sleep on white sheets, you guys are crazy. This is actually a really similar layout to what Lottie and I had in our previous jumper. And that is having the kitchen at the very front and then to the left, the fixed bed and then a little entry unit. Very simple layout, very practical. And she is kind of in the position where now she's like miniaturized a lot of the layouts that you see in bigger vans. If you are in a low top, having some sort of like an ottoman or like a, a small like cushion seat that kind of floats around in the van. So that way when you are cooking or when you are cutting something or grabbing something or looking for something, you're not always on your knees. I know when we've met some people in low tops, there was one girl I remember in particular who would keep volleyball knee pads in her van so that when she was cooking and everything, her knees didn't get sore after a while. Oh my God, all my forks and knives and spoons and all of that fun stuff here. As someone who has received the wrath of the internet when it comes to having knives on magnets, I can say if it is a good and solid magnet, it is not a concern to be flying all over the place. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. This cutting board, again, is held on by a Velcro tab. So if I want to take it out and use it, you know, over when I'm sitting on my bed, I can do that. Um, got my speaker out here, also held on with Velcro tabs. <laughs> I am like a walking commercial. Um, got my little fan here that keeps me nice and cool at night. The reason I chose this tour is because she has a kitchen inside her low top. This is not common for every low top. A lot will have like where they pull out from the back to have a kitchen. I always think it's really wise to have one inside of your van when you are doing stealth camping, when it is cold outside, when it's raining, all of the ways that you can even like cook a dinner or cook something if you're in like a mall parking lot and not feel like your entire home is completely exposed to anybody walking by. And this is a fun example of how all of the advice that I've given in previous tours becomes like non-applicable because in this case, I totally support a portable gas stove. If you're in a van of this size, you're going to be cooking outside a lot when you wanna have a stretch, when you wanna eat out, and being able to take that outside of your home is super important for just straight up comfort. You don't wanna be trying to look over the top of a pot 
in your van, on your knees, having to hoist yourself up. It's just not practical design-wise. Inside of here is my fridge. It's a Dometic cooler. Um, they're flipping pricey, but definitely worth it since I'm running off of just a battery over here. Um, she has no solar panels. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Assuming that her battery is hooked up to the alternator, but that is requiring her to do a fair amount of driving, especially driving unnecessarily just to fill up your battery. Wow, that's a bummer. It can run and run and run and run um, and uses really little energy, so that's really nice. And it kind of holds a lot of food, um, more than I thought, so uh, excited about that. It's really nice to have cold food. People seem to be all over the spectrum on what they think of top-loading fridges. In this case, I actually think it makes some sense. With smaller vans, everything is like miniaturized. And everything that you have miniaturized, it's optimal if it could be portable because you will be taking it in and out, in and out. That's just the hassle that comes with having a smaller van. Cold air sinks. So when you have your fridge open, there's always this like, oh, well, it actually keeps everything cooler because there's no cold air escaping. That efficiency kind of loses a lot of its value because essentially your fridge is open for like double or triple the time as like the average fridge because you're having to dig <laughs> for everything that you're looking for. More dry food, chips, that kind of thing. Um, in here is kind of my like toiletry kits. You know. So that is a great side unit. One of the things that this kitchen is lacking is some sort of a sink. You are able to carry less water, but you can still carry water with you. Over here, I've got a little, um, I don't even know what to call that. That's just a little storage bin basically, but, um, I keep my laundry in here, so when I have dirty clothes, I just toss them in there, which has been really nice. Um, underneath my laundry bag, there's just more storage, so I just keep random little things in there like umbrellas and whatnot. I really like this entry unit. I think there are a couple of ways that it could be optimized. The first would be to not have that hamper go all the way to the bottom, to set up a drawer that pulls out. Then you have even more storage on the bottom. I've gotten a lot of Questions from people who are in vans of this size being like, what about the bathroom? What should I do for a bathroom? Leave no trace and use public facilities. My second is there's a lot of creative options for people who live in vans such as this. And if your U factor is a little too high to be able to handle creative, you could easily keep one of the porta potty cassettes in a side unit such as this, like at the bottom below the hamper. And there is the bed, which is like the star of the, of the show. Cause I've got all my plants over there. It's so cute and cozy. I'm really happy with it. It's like a memory foam mattress. It's a full size, so I can fit two people on there. And everyone asks, can you lay down across? And I was like, yeah, I'm exactly 5'9", and the whole space across is 5'9". So, um, yeah, you have to be 5'9 to sleep in here. Love that she has a fixed bed. If you are single, you have one of the benefits in a small space like this to be fine when you have a twin size bed or maybe something a little bit bigger than a twin or a custom or something like that. She'd have so much more space in her van if she just cut that mattress size in half. Vans of this size are super well suited for individuals. I know with couples or if you're traveling with somebody else, that can get a little bit tougher. Lottie and I are no strangers to this. He was living in a highest for 14 months when I met him in New Zealand. I upgraded from a tent to van life. What can I say? And that's actually how we met was when, oh, now you guys are getting like a fun fact. <laughs> Lottie and I. Oh, it's a van life love story. Under the bed, I've got all of my clothes. This pulls out pretty far. It goes across the length of the entire bed and it's really heavy. So I usually have to close it with my feet. Um, because I have a lot of clothes. And it doesn't seem like that's supported on any rails. That's probably why. <laughs> yeah, and then up there, I've got more storage cabinets. Up here, I keep kind of all my 
paper junk, which is probably the messy, messiest part of the van. Um, you know, just my checks and my, I don't know, paperwork, whatever. <laughs> Up here is my games and books collection. My dad made a little mosquito screen, which is nice because I can just pull it out. Um, just to get a little airflow at night, so really like that. Then I've got my mirror over here. This is where I get ready. I've got my little makeup and whatever kit I just mounted on the wall there. So you can tell on the cabinets over her head, I wasn't sure from the last shot, those are really thin and that's actually quite smart because that allows her to still sit up in bed without hitting the back of her head. The mirror thing is definitely like her wow factor. Even if the mirror, again, were half that size, you'd have all of this space to work with. But what is cool about having mirrors in small spaces is it gives the illusion of the space being bigger than it actually is. That's about it. Over here, I guess, is just the front seat. I added little hooks to the back of this passenger seat just so I have place to hang wet swimsuits and whatever. Um, and then this is where I drive. And this is my battery situation. Now, I do think it's a misconception that you can't have a good amount of power in vans of the size. You can still throw up a solar panel. You can still have a good amount of batteries. I would say of the priorities for most van lifers, it should be power and insulation. I don't know what she did for insulation. Please do not underestimate insulation in small vans like this. It's really easy to get these smaller spaces warm if you are properly insulated. Your body heat does most of the work. Didn't show the back of the van, but I'm assuming that a lot of it is pull-out storage. That's usually how people will go about using the back of their smaller vans. If you're able to keep chairs in there, a table, it's really traveling with very little sacrifice. So there you have it, that's my van. Um, there's uh, not much more to it. It's small, so not a very long video. Beautiful van, she did a very good job. My did you notice was all about the cabinets staying open when she's trying to use them. You can tell there was definitely a lot of like DIY in the cabinetry, like with a lot of her drawers, those weren't on runners. So she had to like glide it across the ground and like cut it up. Same with, with the fridge, but the, the lack of struts on her overhead unit. What that means is that she has to hold it up with her hand or she'll need to like put a piece of wood, something kind of lightweight that can keep it open when she's trying to grab multiple things, which can be easily avoided and definitely becomes a pain in the butt very quickly. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's van tour review and learned a little bit more about low tops. I will continue to throw these in throughout the series because I do think it's important to not fog up van life with all of these like beautiful sprinters and $100,000 builds. It's just not the reality. You can have a well-designed space that doesn't cost a lot of money. I did do some research on this van before recording this episode and the total cost for both the van and the build were 6,000 US dollars built in the USA. So this is a very clear, affordable layout and execution for people who are working with that budget. I'm very excited for the next few Wednesdays to come because I am doing some of the most requested van tours coming up. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, smash the like button, and I will see you next Wednesday. Have a good week.